Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and to Richmond Land Rover Specialist where it's been long awaited but we're here for episode two of the repairs on my cheapest Range Rover. Now quickly before we get started as you probably will have seen recently I've just got back from Germany taking my 7 Series to the Nürburgring and the Autobahn and doing lots of fun stuff there. Now you might be wondering where those videos are well the good news is they'll be the next videos you see on the channel. Moreover, I want to apologize because I really, really wanted to get this car on the channel more and document more with it. But to be totally honest, it's been awaiting some repairs that really need doing, and we've just been struggling to find some dates with Richmond Land Rover Specialists here to get them all sorted. But hopefully today is the day. Now, as you can imagine, there is a long list of things that need sorting with this car, and we'll hopefully get through as much of them as possible because tomorrow, I'm taking the car on its very first road trip and of course I'll be filming that for you and you'll be seeing all of that in a few weeks time but I want to get a few of the urgent things sorted before that obviously for well obvious reasons. So the main things with this car then are the radiator still needs replacing that's where the big coolant leak is coming from it needs some new tires which hopefully we can get sorted today there's various knocks and cranks and stuff coming from the car especially when turning quite sharply round corners so I believe there's probably some suspension components that need replacing we'll get that up on the ramp and work it out I think the car also needs a new battery whether or not we'll get that done today I'm not sure but I leave it on trickle charge and that keeps it pretty healthy but it is draining itself over time and lastly then this is an interesting one because this wasn't on film but it was really annoying me that my electronic steering column wasn't working it was going in and out but not up and down and where the steering wheel had been left was really high up. So I was driving the car literally like this. So I took it upon myself to, to fix it myself and happily, I did actually manage to do it and now the steering column is working perfectly. However, on the very drive I did after fixing it where I was all happy and cheerful because my car was now perfect, uh, the cruise control stopped working. I got a height level control warning, uh, air suspension inactive, ABS fault and DSC fault and all of those lights are still on. I thought it could be a battery so I kept it on trickle charge. I did the full left to full right steering lock thing to try and reset it however to no avail. So I wonder if I did inadvertently break something under the sort of steering column area. Now it's really hard to get underneath there and so maybe the guys here today can have a little look or at least put the car through a scanner and work out exactly what's going on whether it's just a weird sensor fault or there's actually some issues there okay then so time for my Range Rover to go in and start on the repairs now I've got some great news for you especially if you're a Range Rover owner potentially looking to have some repairs done yourself I've spoken to the guys here and they've kindly agreed to allow anyone coming from my videos coming to Richmond Land Rover Specialist for the first time to have 10% off their work which is really great because these bills on these cars can stack up and 10% can end up being quite a lot of money. So yeah, if you are quoting my name or these videos saying you've come to Richmond Land Rover Specialist from watching my videos, you can get 10% off your first bill here. Okay, so I've brought the car inside and we're going to quickly have a little look at the diagnostics because of those warnings that I've got on the uh, dash in there. So got a proper diagnostic system in here and hopefully you can see what's going on with it. So apparently what's causing all of this is the steering angle sensor is faulty which means it needs a recalibration so holding the wheel completely straight and recalibrating it. Now that would make sense because as I mentioned it was when I fiddled under here that everything seemed to go wrong. So fingers crossed this, this fixes it. The other thing that seems to be a mess with the car is the brake lights are always on. And that is because the brake light switch is faulty. And actually it makes sense that that might be the culprit for the cruise control not working because all the cruise control uh, switches work and how it works in this car is you select it on and then you press up or plus for it to then maintain that speed. And of course, if the brake light switch is faulty and the car thinks the brake lights are always on, well, that would explain why the cruise control is not activating because you would ordinarily hit the brakes to deactivate the cruise. So, fingers crossed we can replace the brake light switch and that will repair 
the cruise control and the steering angle sensor or steering angle sensor should take care of all the warning lights although we have just cleared all the codes and they're actually not on the dash anymore which is nice to see we don't have a christmas tree up there right now so that should be the electronic bits we're going to take care of and then hopefully or i know that the radiator will be getting replaced uh, this afternoon when the part arrives and hopefully we can look at tires and suspension too So we've gone around underneath the car and there's actually quite a long list of things that need doing. The alternator belt, fan belt is on its way out so that's going to get replaced as a sort of matter of urgency because well the car would basically stop running if that failed. We're doing all of the suspension arms and ball joints, uh, the radiator is going to get done and the brake light switch is going to get done which as I mentioned is probably what's causing me the issue with cruise control. As you can see then, the suspension arms and ball joints are out, meaning the car looks like this currently, and uh, excited to get the new ones in. I'll be interested to see how the car rides after this, hopefully a little bit better. I have been noticing a knock when turning right, and I presume that was coming from the very, very loose uh, arm that was there. So yeah, waiting on the parts to arrive, and then we'll get these fitted along with the tires, and then it will be car down to then pay attention to the radiator which should be getting replaced and the belt as well along with a few other bits. Okay so a little bit of an update then the old radiator is out of the car ah, it's very heavy but as you can see it's very damaged and leaky so that was the reason for my horrendous coolant leak. I was having to top it up maybe every couple of days or so, so it was really draining out. Potentially that could be what's leaking air conditioning gas as well. So I think we're hoping to regas the car with the new radiator on and see uh, if that helps the air conditioning situation. Only problem being now is it's quarter past four on a Friday afternoon and we don't have the belt. Uh, we have the new radiator, as I mentioned, and I think we've only got a couple of the control or the suspension arms and we're still waiting on the brake light switch. Radiator, not so much of an issue because I can top coolant up as much as I need, but we've got that. The alternator belt, the fan belt, that is, that is a problem. If that doesn't arrive today and it can't get fixed today, I probably won't be able to take this car on my trip tomorrow, which will be incredibly disappointing because I'm hoping to obviously create a lot of content around this car for that trip so it really is just a waiting game now and fingers crossed that that at least arrives i think we're still waiting on some suspension components that belt the tires and yeah otherwise i could actually come here tomorrow morning but i don't know if it's not getting delivered today then it might not get delivered tomorrow either so a little bit annoying really hmm as we're sitting here waiting together. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel and you're one of the 80% of my regular viewers that watch and haven't subscribed, you really should uh, because then you'll be notified about my upcoming videos. You won't miss out on things like giveaways and my content and it's just a really nice thing to do and it's free. So if you could go ahead and subscribe. If you are already, just give this video a like and leave a comment. It really helps the good old YouTube algorithm to push these videos. And of course, the better this video does, the nicer Richmond Land Rover specialists are gonna to be to me in the future with repairs and things like that. So for me, let's make this video do really well. So I'm gonna wait around now for a bit and fingers crossed the next half an hour or so, the, uh, the parts arrive, because otherwise they might arrive, but then we're gonna just run out of time to do any of the work. I say we, I'm not doing it, am I? Anyway.
So, it's the next day, and as um, was probably inevitable, couldn't get all the repairs done yesterday, Friday, because not everything arrived, and then by the time it did, the radiator job still needed doing, which is pretty big. The belts needed doing, which is sort of an additional thing. So anyway, it had to fall over till today. And that's why I'm in this absolutely stupendous VW Beetle cab. It's basically my Porsche Boxster. Um, this is probably the most awful car I've ever driven, but luckily it's just a 10 minute stint up to Richmond now. We're gonna pick up the Range Rover and it means that hopefully, as long as everything is fixed, like they say, we can take it on our road trip this afternoon, which, yeah, is the plan. So, yeah, let's get up there, we can get the Range Rover back, give it a little run down, hope everything is fine. Actually gotta go pick up some family from the airport right now, so we'll probably take the Range Rover and check that it's running okay. Get it packed and go on our road trip. But anyway, let's get to Richmond Land Rover and then we can run you through exactly what's been done and see how the car is. Well, I have a smile on my face now because I'm back in my beloved Range Rover and I'm pleased to say that everything seems to be perfect. The cruise control is now working again, which is gonna be necessary for our trip that we're gonna be going on later this afternoon. And everything's been done. New radiator, the new brake light switch, I believe it's called, which is what was causing my brake lights to be on the whole time and the cruise control not to be working. So that's been sorted. Got two new front tires, albeit budgets and um, I didn't choose them by the way, they chucked them on for free. So that's what I've got. The new suspension control arms and ball joints. And what else was there? Oh, we've got new windscreen wipers as well, which is very satisfying actually. Working windscreen wipers is such a basic thing, but without them, it's very, very annoying. So I think that's all. With, well, from all of that I've just mentioned to the brakes that I had done by them a few months ago, which I didn't film actually, and all of the oil uh, rocker cover gaskets that they did in the last episode you saw, which seems like an age ago now, I think is about 3,000 odd pounds that's been spent on this car. But I'm just pleased that it's, it's working perfectly. Um, and of course, Richmond Land Rover helped me out tremendously with, with the, uh, the budget on, on this car. And of course, you guys can get 10% off if you take your car to Richmond Land Rover Specialist. So big thanks to them for, for really working hard to get this done in time for me. I'm very, very happy, very, very happy bunny indeed. And I'm super excited to uh, take this car on a long journey, which is what I've wanted to do with it ever since I picked it up, well, back in April, I suppose it was. So it's been a long time coming, but unfortunately for you guys, you're gonna have to wait until a few videos time, We've got some Nürburgring content to get out of the way, and then you're gonna see me taking this car on the road trip we're embarking on later on this afternoon. So you'll have to wait and see exactly what that entails, but I'm sure you won't be disappointed and it'll be worth the wait. And I'm very excited. So thanks all so much for watching. Thanks for bearing with me with the Range Rover content. Like I said, there's gonna be so much more of it coming now that the car's in a, workable condition and I can't wait to make it all for you so thanks again for watching and I'll see you all very very soon